Welcome to the Daily Dispatch. To kick off today's dispatch, we're covering Xi Jinping's visit to Saudi Arabia and what's going to be on the agenda for China-Arab relations. Then we'll take you to Afghanistan, where a bomb blast has killed seven people. Next, we'll be covering Al Jazeera submitting a case for the International Criminal Court over the killing of a journalist by the Israeli Defense Forces in the occupied West Bank. And finally, we'll break down how and why the state of Maryland is banning Chinese-owned social media platforms like TikTok. We're here to give you the news and to help you infer the world around you. I'm Tayyab Anasar Khan, and here is your Daily Dispatch. On to our top story of the day. President Xi Jinping of China is set to embark on his first state visit to Saudi Arabia after a six-year gap. This will be his first visit to the world's largest oil exporter since 2016 and the third state he will visit since the COVID pandemic. Now, trade and regional security are expected to be on the top of the agenda for the three-day visit. Signing of initial agreements worth some $30 billion is also on the cards. Currently, the Saudi-Chinese bilateral trade is close to $90 billion a year. During the visit, he will also attend the first China-Arab State Summit and China GCC Summit, where he is likely to meet more than 30 heads of states and business leaders from the region. Let's break down what this visit means. Firstly, she is stepping into what is traditionally seen as Washington's sphere of influence. It's been a decade since the U.S. has been replaced by China as Riyadh's top trading partner. Total U.S.-Saudi trade shrunk notably from about $76 billion in 2012 to $29 billion in 2021. The U.S.-Saudi relations haven't been on the best of the terms. During Biden's visit to Riyadh this October, they were at odds over the decision of OPEC Plus to cut the oil production and Biden's declaration to reevaluate ties between the two states. Secondly, China seems to be strengthening ties with the Middle East. China relies on the region for energy and has expanded its maritime footprint to facilitate the Belt and Road Initiative, which is also meant to reach Europe. Some analysts are now predicting that as the U.S. focuses more on the Indo-Pacific region and Europe, China is likely to deepen its footprint in the Middle East. Next on the dispatch, we'll focus on Afghanistan, where seven people were killed in a roadside bomb blast in the northern province of Balkh. Victims were associated with a petroleum company. As of now, no group has claimed the responsibility for this attack. Balkh is a home to important dry port in Afghanistan, with roads and rail links connecting it to Central Asian states. Balkh has traditionally been a stronghold of the Northern Alliance, which has been a fierce opponent to Taliban. Although overall violence levels in Afghanistan have reduced since the withdrawal of U.S. forces, with United Nations estimates saying that fighting has diminished to just 18% to the previous level. Attacks by non-state groups have seen a spike in the recent months, with Islamic State claiming most of the attacks and posing the biggest threat to internal peace and stability in Afghanistan. Last month, a school was attacked in Samargan province, killing 19 people. More recently, Pakistan charged the affairs to Afghanistan, Ubedur Rahman Nezamani came under attack in Kabul, with the Islamic State taking responsibility. These attacks take place as Afghanistan reels from a humanitarian crisis, and international sanctions have crippled its banking and financial sectors, further destabilizing a region grappling with the issues of mass immigration, violent extremism, and large-scale climate-induced disasters. Time to talk about another pressing issue. The international media network Al Jazeera has officially lodged a complaint with the International Criminal Court in The Hague to investigate the killing of veteran journalist Shireen Abu Akleh. The complaint is complementary to the case submitted by Abu Akleh's family in September, urging the ICC to look into the conditions that led to her killing by the Israeli Defense Forces. While the focus of complaint is the incident at Janine refugee camp where Abu Akleh was shot, the scope goes beyond to include the international targeting of Al Jazeera by the Israeli Defense Forces. The ICC exclusively deals with the crimes against humanity and excesses committed during the times of conflict and occupation regimes. In 2021, 
it declared jurisdiction over the actions taking place in the Palestinian territories. The intentional targeting of the civilians, including journalists, is prohibited under international humanitarian law and is one of the reasons journalists wear the visible sign of press on their attire. So they may not be the target during a conflict. The U.S. has also recently announced an investigation of the case, considering Abu Akleh's Palestinian-American citizenship status. The Israeli authorities have called the U.S. move to investigate a mistake. Israeli authorities have claimed the death of Shireen Abu Akleh was also a mistake, as a result of the crossfire between Israeli and Palestinian gunmen. However, independent investigations by Al-Haq and forensic architecture have concluded that the journalist was intentionally targeted. Let's now take you to a decision, which is part of the larger tech wars between the big global powers. The state of Maryland in the US has banned the use of Chinese-owned video sharing app, TikTok, on the government devices and networks. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan issued a directive attributing unacceptable level of cybersecurity risk to the platform. Besides TikTok, the ban also applies to Huawei Technologies, ZTE Core, and also Alibaba products, and also WeChat. In a similar move last week, the governor of South Dakota also barred the state employees from using TikTok on the state-owned devices. TikTok's official response said it was disappointed by the decision and the reasons prompting state bans were fueled by disinformation. These developments are being seen within the larger geopolitical construct, marked by great power contestation between the US and China, which intensified significantly under the Trump administration. The latter increased the tariffs on a number of Chinese products, resulting in the fall of the Chinese exports to the US. China retaliated in kind by imposing the tariffs on the US exports. Although trade between the two powers is slowly returning to the level of 2018, when the Trump administration increased the trade war against China. China's overall exports to US have fallen from 22% at the outset of the trade war to 18% now. The US has blamed China for the deliberate undervaluation of the currency and intellectual theft, while China accuses the US of impeding its rise as an economic power and using the sanctions to further its geopolitical gains. The Maryland ban comes at a time when chip making has become a new front in the US-China tensions. Last month, two European chip deals ran into trouble for their links with the Chinese-based companies, as the US President Joe Biden signs the executive order to implement the Chips and Science Act of 2022 to reduce US dependence on the chips import. We'll keep you updated with more such happenings in the trade wars. Also on the dispatch, we bring you top stories from around the world. Let's see if we can round them up in one minute. The US federal judge, John Bates, dismissed a lawsuit against the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, Mohammed bin Salman, over the killing of a senior journalist, Jamal Khashoggi, in 2018. He cited diplomatic immunity granted by the President Biden as a reason for dismissing this case. Khashoggi, a columnist at Washington Post, who was known for his criticism of the Crown Prince, was killed in the Saudi embassy in Turkey. While MBS earlier denied any involvement, he later said that it took place under his watch. Next, we look into the mass deaths of the Caspian seals that washed up on the Dagestan coast of Russia. About 2,500 dead seals washed up on Russia's Caspian coast. Authorities in the Russian province have collected the samples to determine the cause of the death and have concluded the deaths are from natural causes. Caspian seals are the only mammals in the Caspian Sea and are classified as endangered on the International Union of Conservation of Nature's list. Mass deaths of the Caspian seal have also been reported from Kazakhstan, which shares the coast of the Caspian Sea. Climate change and rapid decline in habitat are known to cause such events, but nothing of the scale has been recorded in the past. Raising concerns about the biodiversity loss and unknown shifts in marine environments. And lastly, Protests have broken out, as Sudan's political parties and military signed a deal to end a deadlock since the coup in 2021. Most protesters are either anti-military groups or loyalists of Omar al-Bashir, who was overthrown in 2019. The deal provides a two-year civilian-led transition. It limits the military's formal role to the PM-led Security and Defense Council, vows to unify Sudan's armed forces, and imposes the control on military-owned companies. That's all, folks. 
We'll be back tomorrow with more bite-sized news that keeps you up to date with what's going on in the country, the region, and the globe. I'm Tayyaba Nasar Khan, and this was your Daily Dispatch.